What's going on, beautiful people of YouTube? Bart here with Tully Television, and I want to thank you for stopping by, liking, commenting, sharing, all that beautiful YouTube stuff. I hope that today is the day I earn that subscription. If so, you hit that red subscribe bar down below. Smash that like button if you like what we're talking about here. And uh, check out our other videos as you're here. Uh, but today we're going, going to wrap up uh, the Season 3, Episode 8 finale of The Mandalorian, entitled The Return. Uh, written by John Favreau, and of course, our cast, Pedro Pascal, as our Mandalorian, Din Darjan, Katie Sackhoff as Bo-Katan, Emily Swallow as Armor. Uh, Mercedes Fernando as Casca Reeves, Jean Carlo Esposito as Moth Gideon, Simon Casson Diaz as Axe Wolves, Carl Weathers as Grief Karga. Uh, if I'm missing any other uh, main characters from this episode, I don't. I apologize. Um, basically. Like I said, we wrap up the story that we've been following for the last uh, seven episodes. All of the plot threads do seem to come up here uh, to a close in some sort of way. Um, there is a couple lingering questions uh, that we can ask ourselves as we're entering uh, the future of this franchise, but... Um, basically, we pick up on, uh, the Mandalorians that were left at the base of Moff Gideon, because if we, if we remember, Moff Gideon set up his secret base on the planet of Mandalore, so he can use the Vescar there to make, uh, Mandalorian armor. His goal with Groku at the time from season one was not to clone him, but to uh, incorporate the force, uh, the strong force presence inside Groku into a clone uh, of himself. We see in this episode that the, all the clone tubes that were in his base are clones of him. Uh, what his plan is, as he revealed in this episode, was to create clones of himself with the force inside of him, or of the clone, in the Vescar armor now to make them an unstoppable uh, weapon, so to speak. Uh, he was not trying to create a clone army for the Empire, uh, for... Uh, somebody else, it was for him. He was trying to take over uh, that uh, he, you know you're a bad character if you're uh, a, turning, a turning heel on <laughs> the dictatorship there that you, the dictatorship is not extreme enough. I need to step in type of thing. Um, you know, it, you know, it's a uh, Scary person, if someone like Stalin is like, he's too much. <laughs> you know, if Castro's like, that's too much. <clears throat> um, put it like that, like uh, Moff Gideon is looking to incorporate all these things into one being that he can control and lead as an army um, throughout the Empire to create his own unique take on the Empire. That's his ultimate goal. Um, Axe was able to get to the rest of the Mandalorians in orbit and warn them about the impending attack of the TIE fighters and, and the bombers. And uh, a lot of the other Mandalorians were able to go back to the surface and back Bo-Katan up. They were able to uh, eliminate a lot of the 
you know, clo- I'm assuming they're cloned troopers in the Vescar armor, uh, or just rando people he was able to convince to join him. Uh, a lot of those people were able to be uh, taken out. Mando was able to escape capture through the help of Groku and his mecha suit. And they themselves, on a side mission to this, went to go take care of Moff Gideon because they said that, although Din said to Groku, we need to be brave because if we don't take care of him now, this is just going to continue to escalate. And as they were uh, heading to his command post inside of the base, uh, he had his uh, R4 unit help him with that, uh, kind of like an R2 thing helping Luke Skywalker, and uh, they were able, it was uh, Mando and Groku that helped destroy the, the clones that Moff Gideon was making of himself, and Moff Gideon and Din uh, started to fight amongst themselves, uh, some of the Red Guard that Moff Gideon had went to go attempt to take Groku out. So, you know, now we have Din, we have Groku in trouble. But the armor and the rest of the cavalry are closing in, and Bo Katan separates herself from them to uh, basically. Help then take care of Moff Gideon because she realizes that that if she doesn't take care of him now, also that this is just going to continue. Her and Moff start to fight, and Moff is just too much, man, because he got the best of Din, he got the best of Bo Katan, so much so that when she went to go strike him with the dark saber, he crushed her hand. And the dark saber, the dark saber is destroyed now. Uh, so that's one of the main significant uh, portions of this episode. Is now the dark saber is destroyed beyond, I guess, repair, and uh, is no longer going to be able to be used by anybody. Uh, so I guess the Mandalorians are going to have to figure out. Uh, some other uh, way to uh, another weapon or another thing if you really want to associate a weapon with the leader. That's if you want to, or you can just be like, all right, well, it's destroyed, and uh, a weapon doesn't necessarily make a leader. But uh, the Mandalorians seem to be a bunch of superstitious uh, followers to their faith, so... There might be a creation of a new saber in the future. We'll see. But at at this time of Star Wars history, um, at the time of this recording, the dark saber is destroyed. They're about to... Adin winds up saving Groku from the Red Guard as Bo and Moff are fighting. Uh, But then Moff... Groku and Din all join forces together again to face off against Moff Gideon. And ultimately, um, as they were fighting, Axe was coming down with the mothership, uh, which was now beyond repair and was going to blow up. He was going to drive that into the base. And so he's warning everyone before coming down, like, get out of there, get out of there, I'm coming, coming in. I'm going to crash, but I'm going to try to crash into this base, all right, to destroy everything. And so all the Mandalorians are scattering. Uh, Bo-Katan and uh, Din are just probably like, if we got to go, we got to go, but we got to make sure that these guys go to, uh, that he goes to. But Moff Gideon winds up getting engulfed in flames, disintegrating, getting atomized. He's gone. He's done. No more Moff Gideon. Uh, Esposito did a great job, man. I love that guy. Uh, He was really a great villain uh, for this series. 
Uh, and Goku gets his uh, big spotlight too because there's all the fires getting ready to engulf Bo, Groku, and Din. He uses the force to create a force field around them and the fire just keeps, you know, bouncing off of it. It's a great shot. And so the fire, fire finally dissipates and Groku relaxes and everyone is just like, you know, catching their breath. Um, we see how the remaining surviving Mandalores were surviving on the planet. Uh, there were underground uh, gardens and stuff like that they were cultivating uh, to, you know, eat, like, I'm assuming, berries and vegetables and stuff like that. Uh, so that's how they're probably surviving mostly on a vegetarian diet, which, hey, if you got to do that, that's what you got to do. I'll miss my steaks, but, hey... <laughs> you know, surviving is primary, the primary concern. Uh, they also, at the end of this episode, relit the Great Forge. Um, and it seems like Bo-Katan will be the leader of the planet of Mandalore. Uh, also, we see Din going to uh, our captain, our new Republic captain that's been helping our Mandalorians out, and he uh, is going... Din is now going to work for the New Republic as a bounty hunter off the books, and his point of... His point man is going to be the captain to give him uh, missions to take out uh, the Empire remnants of here and there. So we may see more... Uh, ways on, on how the First Order is going to form. And then we finally see uh, IG-11, a rebuilt IG-11, being the Marshal for Navarro now. Uh, we see Grief Karga giving Mando a nice little cabin with a nice piece of property off on the outskirts of uh, the town limits there in between his missions. And that's how the episodes end. The episode ends with uh, Groku playing in the yard and Din um, resting his feet. Technically, now Groku is a Mandalorian apprentice, and his name is Din Groku. So I'm assuming that the word, uh, the name Din, is the house name, and Darjin is Din Darjin's real name. Because now with Groku, it's Din Groku. So, I guess the last name is the first and the first name is the last. I don't know. But uh, Groku's now an official apprentice. He couldn't officially become a Mandalore yet because he cannot speak the creed. And the armorer put a block to that. Block! But he is allowed to become an apprentice until he's able to speak the creed. And, uh, oh, and Din finally adopts Groku. You know, because initially you need a parent's permission to be an apprentice. And Din is just like, well, I'll adopt him. He's adopting a 50-year-old baby. <laughs> um, the one question I got, well, there's a couple questions I got for this series. Um... What's going to happen with the character Kane? Where are we going to see her show up next? Because she's still lingering out there. Even though Moff Gideon is uh, now uh, perished. The last episode was entitled Spies. Which means that there's more than one spy that Moff Gideon was using. And um, they never really alluded to that. I was kind of expecting the armorer or Axe Woes or Casca to be uh, the another traitor in the mist. But no, everyone stuck together. All the Mandalorians stuck together. There was no secret traitor. Uh, which is okay, I guess. It just, I don't know why uh, in one of the episodes you would entitle it Spies, as in there's more than one spy lingering around. Uh, they didn't even make reference to a secondary one. 
So I don't know why I just name it Spies and, and instead of Spy. I don't know. And another thing that really irritated me at the end of this uh, episode specifically is that when they're at the Great Forge, no one, like, even mentions, his, mentions Paz Vizsla at all. Like, there's not a... Uh, to our fallen comrades, to... Uh, you, you know what I mean? Like, Paz died, man. And if it wasn't for his sacrifice, maybe some of these uh, chain of events wouldn't happen. And they just ignored that whole thing, which is like... Okay. He's been around since season one. Like... There's no reference to him passing on at all by his by his crew? By his crew? And then this whole episode this whole season was just really a vast difference between the first two seasons that if you wanted to make this the Bo Katan show, just make a Bo Katan show. If you wanted this to be about the Mandalorians, the name it the Mandalorians, not the Mandalor Mandalorian. This show was set up between Din Djarin and Groku. Then they ruined that whole season two finale by reuniting them in another show. And then when you come back to watch this show, if you're not aware of the Book of Boba Fett, you're like, "What the f what the hell is going on here?" Uh, this season was too much having to know 50 other shows, uh, 50 other things that happened. And for casual Star Wars fans or fans that just got into this, you don't know what the hell is going on. And the Dark Saber history is so convoluted anyway that Obi Wan should have had it. Uh, Palpatine should have had it. Um, if you were really following uh, that thing. Of defeating the prior owner, because Obi Wan did that. Palpatine both defeated Darth Maul as he had the dark saber, so one of them should have had the dark saber beforehand. Um, it just was. Uh, this was not the same feel or or uh, anything like that from the first two seasons. I found this season to be a little bit more disappointing because. It didn't concentrate on our two characters or continue any of the consequences of Fallout from Season 2 for our characters. It just then transitioned into the Bo-Katan show and the Mandalorians as a race show. And that's okay. I'm not saying that we can't have a show like that, but you took a lot of good faith of people who stuck around for the first two seasons of this show. And you just kind of dumped it down the tubes, in my opinion, by introducing a backdoor series into this series that wasn't about that initially. Um, if you were to take this series and just make a different series, I think a lot of fans would be fine with it. But with... The fact that you replace basically this whole season of the Mandalorian uh, with the whole race of Mandalorians uh, really sucked a lot of people out of the momentum that this series had. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy definitely made sure that John Favre's progr progression was killed off uh, by the end of season two, and this was very much a Kathleen Kennedy season three interference um and i'm kind of getting tired of star wars and their shenanigans i think kathleen kennedy has done a lot of damage to this uh property and uh that's just my opinion on it i'm not sure if they're going to do a season four of this or not but uh i'm almost hoping that they don't now because of how i feel about season three Again, visually it looks good, well acted, but that 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 bait and switch that a lot of fans feel up, that they did this season uh, 
sucked a lot of momentum out. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts are down below. And until next time, peace, Nookums.